I mean, I got a lot of nicknames like TP, Panone, Noni. Uh, pretty much just go by Panone. I like Noni. Yeah. That's yeah. good. Good Italian. Yeah, man. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gustavus Pannone, good Italian name. Yeah. I'm Cooper Boardman. Uh, place I want to start is, you know, you're a Rhode Island kid yeah. playing in Massachusetts. You just said you've got cousins, you've got family at, at just about every game. What has this yeah. been like for you over the last month? Uh, it's been really special for me, just like being able to come out on this field and know that, you know, my mom and dad are in the stands, my sister's here, my girlfriend, um, just so many loved ones that I, I grew up with that have watched me come up through my career and just like having them in the stands has, has been really cool. For you, you know, obviously it's been kind of a, a heck of a few years, right? You get pandemic yeah. year, yeah. the alt site, last year you got to go out west. I, can you kind of sum up what the last few years have been like for you? Yeah, uh, I mean, it's been a roller coaster of emotions. Obviously, uh, I was with the Blue Jays, had a good little stint with them. And what a job by Thomas Pano. Seven one hit scoreless innings in his first ever big league start. And then uh, I got DFA'd after the 2020 season. I, uh, I signed with the Angels as a minor league free agent. Uh, last year, you know, it was a learning experience really. I played in the PCL, it's a tough league to pitch in. And, you know, at the end of the season, I feel like I was really peaking during the beginning and the middle of the season. I was, I was battling with myself and uh, my results. And, uh, you know, I feel like I came out on top and I, I rolled that into the off season and then ended up getting a, a deal with the Red Sox this year. So pretty awesome to sign here. 0-2 pitch, swing and a miss, a three-pitch strikeout from Padone. Uh, let me be among the last to welcome you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> you mentioned new pitch. Yeah. Cut, cut fastball for you. Yep. Tell me all about it. Yeah, so um, it's really similar to my fastball. Like I, I'm pretty much holding my fastball here, and I, I literally just turn the ball like the tiniest little bit, and I'm, I'm really focusing on letting the ball come off the end of my middle finger. And I throw it with the same mindset, same conviction as my fastball, and even if it moves this much, you know, it, if I can get it in on a righty or throw it away to a lefty, it's it's a really good pitch for me, and it's uh, it's been a it's been a game changer this year. It's opened up all three of my other pitches and allowed me to have success with those as well. What's it like working with Paul Abbott? Oh, it's been awesome, really. Uh, he's he's a one of the best pitching coaches I've had, and I've only been able to really work with him now for a month and a half. Uh, just the way he like treats us every day. We come in, we have a meeting out on the field 15 minutes before stretch every day. He's got a positive outlook on baseball and, and you know, he's here to help us. And he tests me like in my bullpens the other day, like I told him how I felt about my curveball and I'm over here working on, working on, working on. He's like, what are we doing? He goes, you just told me about your curveball. He's like, let's work on something else. Like, so he's very, uh, he's with it. He knows, he knows what I'm working on. And he knows what's going to help me improve, and, and he's challenging me every day, so it's great. Just watching you over the course of the last month, you strike me as a, a super competitive dude, yeah. like in that way. Yeah. What has it been like for you kind of as you've grown and matured over the last few years and, and, and balancing all of that? Yeah, um, you know, it's been tough, honestly. Like I, I went through a stretch over the last year where I wasn't really feeling my best on the mound, confidence, you know, physically, mentally. And I feel like I kind of came to it at the end of last season, like I was talking about. And just to be able to build on that this off season and come into the season early and, and, and kind of get some of the reward, like see the rewards from what I was doing, it feels pretty good. And, and I feel like I'm on a great, a great track right now. And um, I, I feel strong mentally and physically, and I'm, I'm just happy to be where I'm at. There are only like 200 guys who have ever thrown an immaculate inning and I'm yeah. standing next to one of them. Yeah. So I have to ask yeah. you that. It, do you remember it in, yeah, in yeah. great detail? Yeah, yeah. So, um, I mean, obviously the first hitter was like one, two, three. Garcia leads off the fifth for Tampa Bay and takes a curve. And a swing and a miss. Didn't really think anything of it. I didn't even really know what an immaculate inning was at that time. <laughs> I get the next guy, one, two, three. It's Brandon Lau. Strike one pitch, swing and a miss. The 0-2 pitch on the outside corner, strike three called. Still didn't really think anything of like, oh, an immaculate inning, anything like that. And then when I threw strike one on the next, on the third hitter, and in, in the Rogers Center in Toronto, like right up on the third base side, they have like the balls and strikes. And that was my first inning coming in of the bullpen and I had seven strikes, zero balls. And I was like, oh damn. Next pitch I get strike. And I'm like, all right, 
I, all I just kept saying to myself was like, just don't throw a ball. Like, I just wanted to throw this pitch like down the middle. I didn't even care if he hit it, you know, I just wanted it to be a strike, to give myself a chance for the strikeout. And How about that? An immaculate inning, they know it, you can see. If he knows it, he's keeping it inside. An immaculate inning for Thomas Pannone as he strikes out the side on nine pitches. Once I did it, I was like, wow, you know, I, I didn't show too much emotion. I didn't really know like how, how to react. Uh, I was actually playing with Clay Buckles at the time and he threw an immaculate inning too. And just his reaction at the time was like, it was awesome to see looking back at the video of like, cause he knew, he knows how hard it is to do that. And uh, this is a cool moment. You look at this year now, yep. and obviously it's, it's been a pretty good start to the year. Strung yeah. a few good ones together here. Uh, how do you feel like you're at right now? Uh, I feel like I'm, I'm really, I feel great, honestly. Uh, every time I take the mound, I, I feel confident in, in this team and my ability to help this team win. Um, I love my pitch mix right now. I love how I'm attacking hitters. Um, I'm getting ahead. Of, I'm getting ahead in counts. I'm staying ahead. Um, I really, I love where I'm at. I, I feel like I, I just want to keep, keep growing, keep building on what I'm doing. Come to the field every day and just keep working. You know. Sounds good to me. Yeah. Thomas Pinnell, big yeah. thanks. Thank you. Thank you.